Hey everybody, today I'm going to be doing part three of the 60 degree bowl gouge. Uh, when I first started I had planned on this being a three part series, I actually realized that it's better as four, uh, only because I had these small uh, eating slash ice cream bowls to make in bulk. Uh, and generally when I'm turning, I'm doing bigger things and I'm coring out, I'm not wasting away all this wood, but it's some scale when you get down to this size, it makes no sense for me to try to core out a five inch uh, in diameter and maybe two inch deep chunk of wood. It's, it's quicker, easier, more efficient to just waste it out. So uh, the long cutting edge on the 60 degree grind gouge uh, is great for a lot of things. It's also really great for wasting away all this extra wood very, very quickly. So I'll go over that and then I'll um, go ahead and I'll just do a finish cut on the inside of the bowl and show that the 60 degree grind is very capable of giving a good finish off the gouge. Um, in my opinion, it's not the best for the inside of a bowl, at least not on this upper portion when you're cutting in uh, through and severing end grain uh, rather than side grain. So. That said, uh, get to so the first thing I'll do, I'm just gonna flatten this face and because I have so many of these to make and I want them to be almost identical, I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna stop cutting so I have all about uh, the same rim thickness. So just flatten this face a little and you'll see, hopefully you can see, that I've got the face of this gouge almost closed. So really it's just scraping rather than uh, leaving that bevel wide open to grab wood. I'm just removing a little bit. All right, we've got the face nice and clean. There's where I'm gonna stop. So I'll show that last step at a different angle here. I'm just gonna flatten this face. So at this point, you know, and there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. Um, you could just simply start removing from the center out. It's pretty quick, it's efficient, um, but I generally like to do it this way where I will I'll use a bigger portion of that cutting edge within reason. So the tenon on this bowl is is about is less than two inches. Um, so I wouldn't want to fully engage that whole cutting edge and just jam it in. I'm using most of the cutting edge and I'm stopping before I hit this wall over here. And once I'm at that point, I'll simply come back in. in. I'm getting closer to finish thickness out on the edge here, but I still have another, I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch in depth. So I will basically leave the rim alone up here. This gouge is designed to cut with the handle parallel to the ground, basically. So it's going to perform better at this kind of a cut. 
if you're very close to parallel to the ground or perpendicular to the blank. don't use calipers when I'm turning smaller pieces. <laughs> I use my fingers. I can feel I'm getting close. Generally, I would fly through this, but I'm trying to turn slower. Depth. Now I'm going to come in and do one finish cut the whole way through. perfect so that last finish cut I was taking off you know probably a little bit less than a sixteenth of an inch so a nice and light cut makes for cleaner cuts generally and I just come in here and shape the rim a little all right so hopefully you can see there's very, very, very little tear out. There's just a tiny bit up in this top area where I would generally use a 40 to 45 degree grind. So that said, it's nothing that can't be sanded out very, very quickly. It's not severe. Uh, but if I were doing this, um, well, after this video, I'm gonna come in <laughs> with a 45 degree and, uh, and just take just a teeniest little bit off here, which I will cover that next week with a bigger bowl. Um, but while I'm at it, I'm gonna show a variation of that same technique. So a variation of the same technique, I'm gonna quickly flatten the face on this again. Instead of standing out here where I don't have leverage or I don't have a nice pivot point, and this is something I don't recommend that you do this unless you're very comfortable because it is putting you in a place where you could get hurt if you screw up. So what I do, and like I've got to turn 50 of these in a hurry. So the quicker I can sort of remove all this material for me, the better. Um, if you're turning just sheerly for fun, I would probably avoid doing this, but I use my arm to get leverage around the tool rest and I'll pull the tool in. The same cutting action as I was doing previously. cutting action as previously uh, the only difference is your hand is here so if this bowl were to launch it's gonna ding your hand um, I'm not standing in the line of fire so most likely it's not gonna hit me um, it might just pinch my hand take a little bit of skin <laughs> um, but the benefit to doing this is instead of being over here where you don't really have any leverage your hands are eventually gonna wear out at least mine get tired but if I do it this way, I'm using my body as a lever, basically, to remove this wood. And I could do it all day long, and it would not bother me in the least. So, hopefully that made sense. Um, as always, if there's something that makes you a little uncomfortable, you don't feel comfortable trying it, 
or you don't quite understand it, ask a question. Um, until you understand it, don't try it. So like that last step that I showed, if you're really, really comfortable turning, if you turn all the time, if what you're doing is second nature, go ahead and try it. Um, if you're new to turning, I would suggest that you don't do that. Um, just because until you get an idea of how much wood you can remove safely, um, it's putting your hands in a risky spot. For me, um, if I turn three or 400 of these little bowls, uh, the chance of me having one pop out is pretty slim. Um, so I'm just sharing because a little trick that I do is a production turner um, that sort of saves my energy. So that said, uh, next week I will continue. It'll be, it will be the last of the series. Um, I will do a bigger bowl that's more my standard bowl with the, uh, with the closed in form. And I'll show why I like to switch grinds from uh, from the 60 degree, uh, especially out here from the top of the rim down at least a third of the way. Um, generally, I will use a 45 degree grind as far as I can until it's impossible for me to keep a bevel rubbing cut. So all that said, I hope that these have been helpful um, and make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss the next one. So anyhow, everybody, take care.